I occasionally get bladder leaks. I tried Always Discreet underwear. It absorbs an entire glass of water. It fit like a glove. It just felt like real underwear. Game changer. <laughs> it's the protection we deserve. Life doesn't stop for diabetes. Be ready for every moment with Glucerna. It's the number one doctor recommended brand that's scientifically designed to help manage your blood sugar. Live every moment. Glucerna. Tomorrow on ET, our Channing Tatum exclusive. How he's mixing work and play with girlfriend Zoe Kravitz. I enjoyed creating with him. Plus, only we are with Kathy Lee Gifford gushing about her new grandson. That, that he, smile of his. He's already got his own fan club. You know who else got fans? Who? Yellow. Happening now. Coming up, we're precinct two reserve deputies forced to provide security for free. That was part of the testimony during day five of the Michelle Barrientos Fela public corruption trial. Texas A&M San Antonio starts a new initiative that will address often overlooked autism disorders in the community. Coming up, we'll tell you about this new institute and why it will help thousands of families, especially those in South Bear County. And more rainfall opportunities are in the forecast. Actually, some rising rain chances this week. I'll tell you more about it in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, a deadly shooting. A 20-year-old man shot and killed in broad daylight. This happened around 245 in the 3800 block of Morales on the city's west side. That is not far from Our Lady of the Lake University. San Antonio police telling us someone in a gray Jeep Cherokee drove past the victim's house and fired multiple shots. The man standing in his yard hit two times in the back. He died on the way to the hospital. Police have witnesses and some of the victim's family in questioning right now. They're hoping to learn more about the suspect or suspects involved. A busy night in Uvalde this evening. In just about an hour, the Uvalde CISD school board will be holding a public hearing and two special meetings at the John H. Harrell Auditorium. Yeah, with a little more than a week until the start of school there, there is a lot of details to hammer out from safety and security to how much it will all cost. Our Lee Waldman joins us live now. Lee, this first public hearing centers around the district's budget for the upcoming year. Yeah, looking at those online agendas that the district has posted, each of these meetings tonight will start with a 21 second moment of silence to honor the lives taken at Robb Elementary. And then the public hearings will get right into budget approval and adoption of the district's tax rate. Now the district will need to finalize both the budget and tax rate prior to September 1st, which is this Thursday. The public hearing is required so the public can ask questions and submit their comments on the proposal before it's adopted. This meeting is slated to last 30 minutes. Right after that, the first special meeting is set to begin. According to the agenda, there will be a superintendent update, but no details have been released as to what that will be. Then the rest of the meeting will be an open forum for parents and community members to ask about safety and security plans for the 2022-2023 school year. It's something families of victims have been vocal about since the end of last school year. Having more officers is obviously not the question. I mean, we do need them, of course, um, but our concerns are the outdated schools. Um, you know, the high school is a very widespread campus, lots of open areas, lots of space. You can't just fence that. I mean, fences aren't going to help either, so they've got to get something. There is no set time limit for tonight's open forum meeting. The last meeting of the night, the last special meeting is set to begin at 715 or whenever that open forum meeting is, is going to end. Now coming up at six o'clock, we're going to run you through what we're expecting from that last special meeting. Live in Uvalde, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee. Day five of the Michelle Barrientos Vela public corruption trial. She's accused of tampering with security payment logs at Rodriguez Park. Today, a witness said he worked as security under the ex constable for more than a handful of times and never got paid. Dylan Collier joins us live downtown with the latest twist in this case. Dylan. The yeah, evidence last week showed how disorganized and frankly poorly run Precinct 2 was with Barrientos Vela in charge today. We heard testimony that the handling of security at that Westside Park may have been illegal. Deputy Kelvin O'Neill, 
who worked as a reserve deputy under Badia and Tisvela before going full-time. City repeatedly worked security at Rodriguez Park in 2018 while still a reserve. This would be a violation of the Texas Occupations Code, which restricts what type of peace officers can work these types of security jobs. On top of that, O'Neill testified he wasn't compensated by the then constable. I would say probably about anywhere between eight and ten. Eight and ten times? Mm hmm During that time, were you ever paid? No, ma'am. Why does this matter? Well, the jury has now heard allegations against Barrientes Vela that are on top of what she's criminally charged with and that she may have had a motive for hiding factual payment records from investigators in this case. The prosecution moved through several other witnesses today but continues to present its case. The jury was dismissed for the day about a half hour ago. Reporting live downtown, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Dylan. Leon Valley police left with only a vague description to help them track down a gunman who broke into a man's apartment overnight. This happened around 10 o'clock in the 5600 block of Evers Road. Police say the gunman kicked down the door at the Vista Del Rey apartments, called the victim a thief and started shooting. The man who lives there was hit several times and taken to a hospital in serious condition. Police say another woman was inside, but she ran once the shots were fired. The shooter also took off, and the only description witnesses could give was that he was a man in a blue shirt and jeans. There's a big traffic jam this morning. We now know the details of why. Police say a woman was killed while running across Loop 410 near Marbach Road. It happened about 620 this morning. They say she ran across all four lanes of traffic and was hit by someone driving a Ford Focus near the exit ramp. The woman taken to the hospital where she later died. The driver did stop to help and will not face any charges in this case. An update now on the number of monkeypox cases in Bear County. Today, Metro Health reporting two new cases, which brings the total to 27 cases since Friday. Monkeypox is spread through direct close contact with a rash, scabs, or bodily fluids from an infected person. We have tips on prevention and the vaccine that's currently available. You can find all of that at KSAT.com. A government giveaway ends this week because there simply isn't any more funding. We're talking about the free at-home COVID tests. The Biden administration first launched the program through the COVID.gov website back in January. It allowed for those tests to be mailed directly to your home. Over the course of three rounds, every household was eligible for more than a dozen tests. Now, if you try to go to that website, you're going to see a message saying the program will be suspended this Friday. This comes after dozens of states have already started shutting down public testing sites. The country currently reporting approximately 90,000 new cases each day, but with most people having access to home tests, Positive test results likely aren't being reported to local officials, and that number could be even higher. New at five, many local families often struggle to get access to basic autism services. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports that about one in 44 children has been identified with autism spectrum disorder, and the numbers are higher among Hispanic communities. RJ Marquez tells us how Texas A&M San Antonio is looking to reverse those trends with a new autism institute on its campus. There are thousands of families in Bear County waiting for a critical autism evaluation. One of our um, initiatives is to help with the assessment and the evaluation process. Sarah Minner is the director of the Institute for Autism and Related Disorders at Texas A&M San Antonio. This is a new multifaceted program looking to help South Texans diagnosed with autism. We're hoping to shorten the wait list by providing direct services to students and for individuals in the community while also growing clinicians here on campus. The latest CDC data projects there are nearly 30,000 people diagnosed with autism living in San Antonio. And the average wait time for families to evaluate their children ranges from a year to 18 months during a critical developmental period. There's only less than two handfuls of ABA uh, clinicians that live in uh, this areas. If you get children evaluated sooner and access to services sooner, they're going to have greater long-term outcomes. This institute is the first of its kind in South Texas and will feature a few elements, including a clinic for people living in this area and also a mobile bus unit that will go out directly to the community for assessments. This institute will also help adults with autism who age out of the public school system. Adults with disabilities who need funding for services such as, you know, um, wheelchairs for day habilitation programs. Minner says the goal is to remove barriers and get 
give access to families in parts of the county who need it most. We can really change the lives of individuals with growing this institute. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. He wants a legal intervention. He might just get it. A federal judge saying she is inclined to grant former President Donald Trump's request to appoint a special master to intervene in the review of documents taken from his Florida home. She's given the Department of Justice till tomorrow to respond. The purpose would be to determine if any privileged materials were removed from Mar-a-Lago earlier this month when the FBI seized 27 boxes, including 11 that contained classified materials. Last week, a heavily redacted affidavit revealed some of the materials were about human intelligence, spies, electronic eavesdropping, and secrets from allies. The most important part that's redacted, though, relates to the obstruction. And that, to me, is what this all is going to come down to. The former president denies any wrongdoing. The DOJ has agreed to file a more detailed response to Trump's request by the end of tomorrow. The hearing for the special master request is set for Thursday. Let's take a look at traffic out there right now. The Transguide camera here at Highway 281 in St. Mary's. Looks like we're looking at the southbound lanes, and you can see there there's a vehicle in the grassy area, one right in front of it as well, but doesn't look like it's causing too much of a backup during the 5 o'clock commute. And you can see in that camera there, we have sunshine locally, but some good rainfall generally east of San Antonio. Some heavy rain east of I-35, especially between Luling and Gonzales. Right along Highway 183 there, some heavy showers have popped up and even clipping parts of I-10. So I-10 east of San Antonio has some wet spots on this evening commute, but locally uh, we're generally dry. Still something could flare up here over the next couple of hours. You get into Atascosa County and just outside of Pleasanton and Jordanton, just east of I-37, that's where we have some isolated downpours that have popped up. But you look locally and really not much out there right now, but an outflow boundary, this green line is moving our way and that could help generate a few more showers in the coming hour to two hours across our area. 93 in Lakey, 97 in Floresville, Panna Maria, a little bit cooler in lower 90s and even Mico at 92 degrees. This evening, a few of those showers, especially east of town, early and then after sunset, that activity should generally come to an end as we fall through the 80s. Better rain chances on the way and we'll talk about that in just a bit. All right, thanks, Adam. Save more, waste less. It's a mantra more and more people are trying to live by. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz shows us three eco-friendly swaps you can make at home. They can help you go green and save some green, too. Look familiar? Some habits burden the budget and the environment, but some simple swaps can help both. The first is as easy as changing a light bulb. Replacing your old incandescent bulbs with new LED light bulbs. These can make a big dent in your electric bill. Another way to take those savings further is to actually replace them with smart bulbs. By programming smart bulbs to turn on and off at specific times, you can eke out extra savings. Smart bulbs can be pricey up front, though. This one from Wise is easier on the wallet than others. Next, if you're a Fizz fan, you can save money with a soda maker. Say you drink a liter of seltzer a day and it costs about 90 cents. Swap for this $80 soda stream Terra and it will pay for itself in four months. Finally, paper towels. If these are soiled with food, you can put them in the compost, but they do not belong in the recycling bin. That means a lot of them end up in the trash. Paul Hope tried out several alternatives. My family and I were going through close to two dozen rolls of paper towels a month. Reusable paper towels offer a paper-free alternative that's better for the earth and that saves money. These from Mio Eco towels are biodegradable and absorbent, but Paul prefers these super inexpensive washcloths. Cheaper to use and they get the job done. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. NASA said for a big mission today, that never took flight. Why the Artemis launch is getting pushed back. Here's what we're working on for the news at six o'clock today. More people calling Helotus home, but that has come with more challenges. Bear County Commissioner's Court voting to delay the construction of a new apartment complex off Highway 16. Well, coming up at six, Alicia Barrera speaks to a local business owner and someone who lives there about this influx in people. Plus, a dangerous form of cervical cancer is on the rise, specifically for one group of women. Who that is and why the numbers could be increasing. Plus, 
it's not a one month blip in prices, but a continual increase in prices. Inflation, we are all dealing with it. The highest prices in four decades. But why now? What got us here? That's what we're breaking down in a new case that explains. And we'll dive into what the consumer price index is and what may help San Antonio should we see a recession. That's today at 630. All that and more coming up on the news at six. moment nearly five years in the making, but after multiple mechanical delays and lightning near the Kennedy Space Center, NASA has scrubbed the launch of Artemis. The mission is not carrying any astronauts. It's meant as a test flight ahead of the 2024 launch that will eventually take people to the moon. But crews found an engine bleed with one of the rocket's four engines. We don't launch until it's right. Uh, they're taking an uh, opportunity while that vehicle is still fueled up. Uh, to work this problem and they're going to work it. They'll get to the bottom of it. They'll get it fixed and then we'll fly. Now, if the engineers can fix the issue in time, the next launch window will be this Friday. Let's take a look outside with live cam, a new week, and it sounds like a new round of rain chances. Adam. Yeah, a new week and more promising rain chances are back in the picture, and you see some vertical development to those clouds off to the southeast, and that's where we've had most of the rain so far today, east and southeast of San Antonio. But I want to get into our rain chances first and foremost. It's going to be kind of like what we saw last week, the next few days, with the better coverage of the rain developing across our area. We're talking about 40 to sometimes maybe maybe even 60% of South and Central Texas getting in on the action. And that's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And then we see those rain chances fall off again by Friday into the weekend. Similar pattern as to what we had yesterday. OK, here's a look at radar, the big picture of what's happening. And you see some good steady soaking rain far east of San Antonio right now. And that's the leftovers of some heavier rain. But that's even affecting parts of DeWitt County from Quero, Quero into Victoria. Yorktown getting missed by it. Goliad just getting clipped. And off to the north, you get Gonzales to Luling, Har Har Harwood. That's where we have some of the heavier downpours. A little bit of lightning and thunder. And these aren't moving very much either. These are heavy rainers that are really just sitting in one one spot and they develop westward more than actually move westward. Smiley just getting clipped, but not really getting hit by that downpour that's there right now. So Smiley just outside of town and even on the west side of Smiley between Smiley and Nixon, you can see the rain and you're getting some showers along 87 there, but most of it is just to the northwest of you in Gonzales County and some pockets of heavy rainfall still developing in parts of Atascosa County. And this is mainly east of I-37, but now it's starting to develop right over the interstate and get a little bit closer to Jordanton and Pleasanton. Charlotte just missing out. You can see that one flare up or two of them even flare up off in the distance. Uh, but really not much to go for them. You see this green line, that's the outflow boundary that's pushing westward, and that itself could help kickstart a few more showers locally in the coming couple of hours. So we still have an opportunity. Cross your fingers. I just think it's going to be very isolated in nature. There's one little lonely shower east side of Bulverde right now, outside of Smithson Valley. As for the rainfall across the state, it's been a pretty good day. Far West Texas, even the Panhandle getting in on some action. And you see the radar from along the Gulf Coast today. It's been good and we're in an interesting what I like to call atmospheric squeeze play right now because of the situated high pressure systems around us. We're getting this moisture, tropical moisture coming in aloft and even at the surface coming off the Gulf of Mexico and then another wind coming in from the north that just kind of squeezes it right here in Texas and is good for our rain chances going forward. That's why we elevated those rain chances a bit the rest of the week and not just for us, but other parts of the drought stricken state as well. Notice noon tomorrow, a few little isolated pop up showers. I do think the models may be overdoing it a little bit toward Gonzales by the noon hour and even Hallettsville, but still there's some hope. And then we see better coverage likely on the radar screen through tomorrow afternoon on into the evening hours. I think it's mostly going to be the typical time frame of, you know, after 1 or 2 p.m. and through about sunset. Let's talk temperatures though. 96 are high today. That's two degrees above average. The record 107 back in 2011. 
Victoria at 77 right now. Houston at 78. You can see where we have the rain cool there. Meanwhile, New Braunfels, sunshine and 99 and 97 currently in Del Rio. Hondo at 96, even Divine at 100 degrees. So tomorrow we start the day in the upper 70s and then make it into the low 90s with the better rain chances, some better coverage. And it looks like we'll be below 100 still for the foreseeable future. Mid 90s that most by the weekend. Okay, thank you, Adam. All right, cut down day is looming in the NFL, and the Cowboys, like all the other teams, have decisions to make. And not just on cuts, but also who you're going to start on that offensive line when we come back. Big decisions to make for Dallas and all the NFL teams. Up front, we already have some early releases, and the KSAT Pigskin Classic 2022, huge success coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Calvin Joseph has apparently suffered a concussion after a collision. The Cowboys' final preseason game in the 27-26 victory against the Seattle Seahawks happened in the first quarter. He did not return to the game. Joseph had earlier been cleared by Dallas area police in a murder investigation was getting his football career back on track until now. The season is still just under two weeks away, so that timetable may work in his favor. But the Cowboys have more decisions to make before cut-down day tomorrow. They already have been told, or told Ben DiNucci, he will be released, but they also have a decision to make on the starting lineup. More specifically, who will replace Tyron Smith at left tackle? It will go to rookie Tyler Smith or perhaps move folks around to include Connor McGovern. We're looking at all the different options. So, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, this is a this is a long-term decision, and um, and that's the we'll, that it'll be a big part of our decision. All right, for the Houston Texans, it appears that rookie Damian Pierce has earned himself a starting position at running back after his preseason performances. After shutting out the San Francisco 49ers 17 to nothing, Pierce was able to show off his skills again. He carried the ball six times for 37 yards, included a one-yard touchdown. The fourth-round draft pick has been consistently good, but would head coach Lovey Smith go with a more veteran player as his starter rather than a rookie to kick off the season on September the 11th? I like veteran players a lot more than rookies, and I'm going to – I'm going to like these rookie players a lot more, I should say, when they're not a rookie anymore. But uh, I don't get into that. To me, it's the best player. They're rookies. They're older players. Been around for a while. Doesn't matter at all, really. We're going to go with the guys that, that we see can help us right now. All right, the Texans will kick out their season September the 11th at noon against the Indianapolis Colts in NRG Stadium. I want to give a shout out to everyone who helped make Saturday's KSAP Pigskin Classic 2022 presented by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers a huge success. It's rare you get a great game in a season opener, but in this case, we got three great games that were decided by a total of five points and one that went to overtime. Smithson Valley's 14-13 victory over Reagan. Judson's 46-43 overtime win against Johnson. Number two steal upset of number one Brennan, 35-34. Thanks to our crew here at the station, the folks at Texas Sports Productions, to the Alamo Dome staff and Northside School District staffs as well could not have been more pleased with everything that went on that day and i hope everybody enjoyed it as much as we did it was a lot of fun it sure was wasn't it yeah i just awesome i mean football yeah and just the crowd seemed to enjoy it the band seemed to enjoy it everybody seemed happy yeah and let's do it again next year let's hope so hey, yeah let's do it thanks greg sure <laughs> we'll be right back All right, there's a look at the radar screen. Most of the action is still east of San Antonio, but we're watching this outflow boundary that's moving in and could kickstart a few showers locally. Otherwise, better rain chances up to about 40% Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Looking more promising. Thanks, Adam. And thank you for watching the news at 5. World News is next. We'll see you back here at 6.